Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty cool mini PC powered by AMD's new Ryzen 8000 series APU. And I say cool because I really do like the way this looks. I've actually been trying to get my hands on one of these. And if you take a look on, let's say Amazon, you'll see several different versions. So they actually make a white and a black version of this. But keep in mind, most of the ones listed over there are actually powered by Ryzen 5000. You can also find the Ryzen 7000 series. I think it's the 7840HS. I ordered this a few weeks ago on AliExpress, and this is powered by the all-new AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. So we've got that Ryzen 8000 series mobile APU here. And I picked up the bare bones model, so I will need to add my own RAM and storage. I'm gonna go with 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, running in dual channel. And I'm also gonna add a one terabyte NVMe SSD. But before we move any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm gonna head over to my updates and security. We're gonna to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm gonna change product key. I'm gonna paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Again, I really do like the design here. Got that cyberpunk theme going on, a little bit of RGB, and I've seen this mini PC in a couple different styles. The older one actually had a clear top, so you could see that RGB fan inside, but you know, they redesigned this one to kind of give it that cyberpunk aesthetic. Inside of the box, obviously you'll get the mini PC. We also got a six foot HDMI cable. And again, I've got the bare bones model, so I did need to add RAM and storage here. And this also comes with a 120 watt power supply. One thing to keep in mind is the power supply included with this is USB type C. That's how we're gonna power this unit. I'm not a huge fan of this, given that we're using an HS AMD APU but it usually doesn't matter. Either way, I just like seeing those barrel jacks because I know they can supply sufficient power. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've also got USB 4, which does run at a 40 gig protocol up front, so we can connect an eGPU. Not much going on around the sides, but around back, we've got our USB Type-C power in, and that's the only thing that this is gonna work with. Two Ethernet ports. Now, one of these is just gigabit Ethernet. The other one is 2.5 gig. We've also got full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and two USB 2.0 ports. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is utilizing the new AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. Based on Zen 4, and with this we get 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz, and a boost up to 5.1 a built-in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3, and this will clock up to 2700 megahertz. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. I've got a one terabyte M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD inside of here. It also has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro. All right, so here we are running Windows 11 Pro. And like I mentioned, this is the second 8000 series mini PC that we've taken a look at. As you can see, we've got that 8845HS and I am running some tasks in the background right now. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. And I did try to go into the BIOS, so I was really hoping we could take this up just a bit. But you know, all of these mini PCs are kind of locked down with this SODIMM RAM. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M. In this, it does boost up to 2700 megahertz. And with these small form factor PCs, I always like to take a look at what the manufacturer has the TDP set at, kind of getting a feel for, you know, 7,000 versus 8,000. And with this, it will boost up to 64 watts, but on average, we're around 54. Kind of normal here for these chips. But another thing to keep in mind is we do have that HS variant. So adding a little more can bring those clocks up on the CPU and the GPU when you're really stressing it out. But I think for gaming, we should be good to go right here. 
And of course, with something like this, if you wanted to use it as an everyday PC, you could definitely do it. More than enough power for everyday tasks, email checking, document editing. You could do some photo editing and even 1080p video editing on this machine with no issues whatsoever. Built-in Wi-Fi 6 offers pretty fast Wi-Fi here, plus we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet around back. And with this, I did want to give you a look at a little bit of 4K video playback with this chip. So what I've got here is 4K 60 HDR. We're going to turn Stats for Nerds on. You can see we've got one drop frame already. Uh, that's just from the load in. A couple more as soon as we start this up. But the 8000 series Ryzen APUs can definitely handle 4K 60 playback just fine. And this goes hand in hand with native 4K video playback. I know a lot of people are streaming from their favorite application or website nowadays. But if you've got a lot of media loaded up on a drive that you want to play, this will run right through it. So far, not bad at all. Everything's really snappy here with Windows 11 Pro. And uh, the first thing I really wanted to take a look at when it comes to performance are some benchmarks that I ran on this PC. Here's Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2,490, multi 12,898. I mean, we're falling right in line with the older 7,000 HS series. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Firestrike 7,562, and finally we've got TimeSpy with a 3,178. Now I'm sure I could get this a bit higher, but given the wattage that we're at right now without messing around with the TDP, I think we're seeing some decent performance out of these synthetics, but now it's time to test out some real world gaming. And the first one here is Helldivers 2, where at 900p medium with FSR set to perform it. We got an average of 55 FPS here in battle. On chip, it's over 60. And of course, taking those settings down to low at 900p will net you over 60 even during battle. But I really don't like the way it looks, especially with the FSR enabled with those low settings. So I left it right here. And I was really hoping for a little more out of this. But one thing to keep in mind is this game is still pretty new. More optimizations will come down the road. And there's a chance we'll see a jump in performance even with these settings on this iGPU. Next up, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, just using that built-in benchmark, 1080p, using those recommended settings, and this does take that resolution scale down, plus add a little bit of FSR. So I think we're at around 59% resolution from 1080, but by the end, we had an average of 123 FPS. Borderlands 3 is one of those games that works really well on these iGPUs. You really got to let all of those shaders kind of cache because once you get into it, you'll see some effects pop up. It'll dip down, maybe a little bit of stuttering. But once everything's cached, you can get a pretty steady frame rate. We actually averaged 82 FPS with this one. Fortnite is a little all over the place on these iGPUs without V-Sync enabled or just locking that frame rate down at 60. You can see up in the top left hand corner, I mean, we're over 100 FPS, but we will get some stutters going on, especially in battle. So right now I'm at 1080p, medium settings, 70% resolution scale, and I would suggest just locking it at 60. You can definitely play this game like that. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. This is one of those that we do have to drop it down to 900p on these setups if you want to do over 60 FPS. And even then, we'll get some dips, but right now is a pretty intense battle, and it's doing much better than I thought it would. Usually, I do like testing this at 1080, but, uh, you know, given what kind of performance these iGPUs are putting out, this is about where you want to be if you're looking to be over that 60 FPS mark. Power World, another one we have to drop down to 900p at least for the time being. Without any mods, we don't have access to FSR. Now, it would be really nice if it was just baked into the game, but uh, you could mod it out, add a little bit. Unfortunately, out of the box, we've only got DLSS and it's not going to work with these iGPUs. So 900p low, we can average 65 FPS. Here's Mortal Kombat 1, 900p, medium settings, FSR is set to performance. Now you can run this at 1080 low with FSR on, but I do think it looks better with that medium preset there. We're at 60 FPS and these iGPUs do handle a lot of these fighting games really well. Even something like Tekken 8 can be played at 1080 low.
And of course, the final game here is Cyberpunk 2077. Since we're dealing with kind of a cyberpunk aesthetic with this mini PC, we had to throw this game in. This does really good on these iGPUs, but you definitely need to go all the way down the low with FSR set to performance. So that's exactly how we have it set up right now. And at the end of this benchmark run, we netted 69.51 FPS. So again, low settings. And when I say low, I mean everything is taken all the way down, not just the low preset. Before I wrap this video up, final thing I wanted to take a look at was just total system power consumption from this mini PC. While I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, this thing only draws 10 watts, even in performance mode. 4K video playback jumps up to 14 watts. Average gaming, 67, and that's the higher end games that we've taken a look at. You can definitely bring this down with older titles or indie titles. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 82 watts. And that's really, really stressing this thing out. So overall, yeah, I think it's a great performing PC. Love to see these new 8000 series APUs come to the market in these things. And of course, we'll be seeing more of these. Plus, we'll see some handhelds with this. But it's not a huge jump over 7000. We really need to wait till the next generation. But if I was looking for something right now, I would probably just go with 8000 versus 7000 unless you can get that 7000 a lot cheaper. And sometimes the case is they're going to be around the same price, at least once everything starts first launching here. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you want to see anything else running on this mini PC, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind installing Linux on it, testing that out. Or if you've got something else in mind, I'm up to hearing your ideas. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.